Hi folks, it's Dr. Katie Burnett here. Today we're going to talk about how to get DNA out of fish. Step one, label two tubes. Make sure you put your initials and the number of the fish. Step two, you're going to cut a very small piece of fish and place it in each tube. Next, I'm going to add 750 microliters of DNA extraction buffer to each tube. I'm going to be very careful not to cross-contaminate my fish with each other, because the whole point is we want to figure out what, what fish number one is and what fish number two is. And if I accidentally mix them together while I'm getting their DNA out, well, that's going to ruin the whole point of my experiment. So I'm going to be very careful not to accidentally get fish number one and fish number two mixed up. In this step, I'm using my micropestle to very thoroughly grind the fish. It's a soap, essentially. Because if I were to shake this up, it would get really bubbly. I'm not going to shake it right now. But 120 microliters into fish number one. 120 microliters into fish number two. Really well mixed. Cool. So if I shake this a bit, I don't know if you can see the, the bubbles on there. That's the SDS. That should feel pretty warm to the touch. Yeah, I'll leave that 65. All right, that's really chunky. Yeah, there's definitely chunks. So that is fish cells, fish lipids, fish proteins, and this liquidy part, that's gonna have the DNA, that's what we want. So let's keep going to the protocol. Got, all right, so 225 of Potassium acetate. So I'm going to change my P1000 down to 220. Potassium acetate. So the hardest things in science is learning how to do all these things with just two hands. Um, you're starting out, it's like, ah, I feel like I need a third hand, one to take cap off, one to hold the micropipette, one to hold the tube. You get better with practice. This is fun for me. I haven't done um, bench work science in months. Um, so this is really fun for me to get back in the lab and actually be able to do stuff. All right, so I added that and look, it has turned super cloudy. That's exactly what we want. So. It was, it, it was a little cloudy before, but now with the potassium acetate, it's starting super cloudy. That is the SDS precipitating out with more of those lipids. So, cool. All right. Next we put it on, oh, on ice. All right, so I'm gonna choke down. Got my ice book in. One, two, five minutes. I'm going to open. Take off the lid, and I'm gonna. This is very important if you ever do this in person. I'm going to put these across from each other so that the weight is balanced in my centrifuge. Um, I don't know if y'all ever uh, have a washing machine uh, like ours that says it's unbalanced all the time, and you have to go in and pull the wet clothes up and try to arrange them so it's about the same weight all around. Centrifuges are the same way. Uh, it's going to be spinning at 14,000 revolutions per minute, which is really scary fast. Um, and that's a lot of centripetal force. If this was unbalanced, it could actually, um, the, well, this one's small enough. I don't think the rotor could burst through, but some of the bigger ones, um, if you do it wrong, people die. <laughs> so, not scary. This one's perfectly safe. All right, so lid back on. And I'm going to set this to... 14,000. All right. And we want it for five minutes. So, got it set. I'm going to press start. And so, I'm going to be careful to not shake it around. All right. So, here we go. So you can see there's this solid white-ish gunk at the bottom. That's our pellet. So that's the, the protein, the lipids, 
And then we have our liquidy, now it looks very clear. That's our super name with our DNA. So awesome, it worked great. I'm gonna carefully put these down before I drop them. Um, <laughs> is I need to uh, transfer some of that supernatant to a new tube. But just in case uh, there's some still some chunks of protein or lipid floating around, I want to funnel those out. And what we use to make a funnel is a little piece of cloth. So if you're here in person, I would show you how to do this a little better. Or if you ever take, bio, or if you ever take um, chemistry, you're going to need to know how, like, wait, this is, you're like, wait, this is a joke, right? This is flat. How can I funnel something with a flat thing? So what you do is you fold it. So first, as my grade school teacher would say, hot dog style. So in half, and then into quarters, or a hamburger style fold. So now it's four layers thick. I'm going to grab three of those layers and pinch. And now, from a flat thing into a funnel thing, which is super cool. So if you ever take a chemistry lab where they ask you to make a funnel out of a little piece of paper, now you know the trick. I've got my little funnel, put that in my tube. I'm going to help it in there with a pipette tip because, all right, so I've got my funnel, got my tube. I am going to Take my micropipette and transfer over most of that supernatant. Or am I supposed to transfer over how much? Like 500? 700. All right, 700. 700 microliters. Again, this is the whole idea like you need more than one hand. so I don't spill it. I'll do the second one closer so you can see it. See how this works. <laughs> so there's my little funnel. Should I put it in my tube? Oh, so I'm gonna do this in front of the camera so you can see better. Turn around. Let's see. Yeah, I think you can see most of what I'm doing here. So I have my uh, chunk that I want to avoid. Super is what I want. Carefully, carefully. I got this. Hey. And then through the funnel we go. Easy peasy. So that's what I want. microliters of isopropanol. Isopropanol, it's been in the news a lot. Uh, a lot of hand sanitizer is made with isopropanol. So that's a type of alcohol that has three carbons in it. Ethanol, the alcohol that we can metabolize without dying or going blind, is called ethanol. Ethanol has two carbons. Isopropanol has three. If you drink this stuff, your body can't metabolize it. It's poison. Um, so Best case scenario, you just damage your liver a little bit. Worst case scenario, you go blind and die. So don't drink hand sanitizer. Um, so that's gonna go in. Um, I'll do the second one where you can see what actually happens in that too. So, so alcohol is going to bind to our DNA and cause it to start to clump together. Oh. What you should see when I add this is it should start turning cloudy and that cloudiness 
Yeah, that's our DNA. So you can see there's kind of two layers going on right now. Ethanol is lighter than, than the rest of the liquid that's in there. So it's top, it's cloudy. I'm going to mix this and it should all start to turn. Yeah, it turns a little cloudy. Now I can see little specks of DNA floating around. You probably can't see them because they're really tiny. Um, it's like, great, now I've got our DNA starting to clump together. I would like that DNA to be uh, usable and wash away all the buffers and stuff, so we're going to spin it again. So I'm going to spin, sorry, mix the other one. Now we spin for five more minutes. In ballast, make sure that they're across from each other so my centrifuge is even. pour off the liquid and assume that there is a tiny pellet of DNA in that tube. I can't even I can't see anything from here. It looks totally clear. I'm just gonna go on to tr trust that I've done this before and uh, there's still there's still uh, DNA in this tube so I'm going to dump the liquid out. I know it's like I have all that work are you sure you did it right? I'm just gonna assume I did it right. Okay. I'm assuming there's DNA in this tube at the very bottom. This one too. Stu and this again, students always find this scary because they're like, but what if I did it wrong and my DNA just got dumped into my waste jar? We've never had it happen. It's okay. Okay? So there's still DNA in there. We just can't see it. That tube looks empty. Right, I'll show you what it looks like. <laughs> it looks it, it looks like I did all that work. You know, the tube obviously had stuff in it before. Now it's like, oh God. There's there's nothing there. It looks like like we lost it. I promise you, it's there. Oh yeah. Oh, Jim says he's here. He's got really good glasses though. Oh, All right. Yeah. Okay, you're right. <laughs> it's okay. So now it says I should look at the last drops using my smaller pipette. This is a P20, which is in tiny amounts. So if there's any alcohol still in there, we'll get that out. Like so. The other one too, just to be complete. So right now our DNA should be at the bottom of our tube, stuck to the side of the wall. And we want to wash it again. Just to make sure we've gotten rid of all the the, the SDS, the salts, everything that was in there. So what I'm going to do, step 12, I'm going to add some uh, ethanol. So ethanol is again that two carbon alcohol that you could drink. Um, we're not going to, this is 70% alcohol, which means it's 140 proof. Uh, you can't buy this to drink it in the US. <laughs> But what it does is it's going to help wash away those salts from our DNA. It's going to make it nice and clean so we have a uh, pure, clean DNA sample to work with. So I'm supposed to add 500 microliters cold ethanol. Like so. I'm supposed to flick it try to dislodge the pellet, which I, I can't see, but we're going to see. Okay. So this part's kind of fun. It's like, all right, it's in there. It's like, okay, I mix like flick, flick it like you're flicking your sibling's ear, right? Like you really want to smack and get their attention. Okay. So that's pretty well smacked. All right. Got the other one. Smack, 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 smack. All right. Get smacked. Spin it again because I'm hoping I dislodged that little pellet from the bottom and that it's being bathed in the ethanol. Make it stick to my tube again. I'm going to spin it again. I promise this is the last spin. So after this, I'm going to pour off the ethanol, let it dry in my hot block to try to get the last of the alcohol off because 
alcohol would inhibit that form, slow down or stop the next step in our analysis, which is our PCR. Once that's um, completely evaporated, we'll then add some resuspension buffer, which is just liquid that will help keep the DNA from degrading while we're storing it to use it. And uh, then we're done. So five minutes, last spin. Now we're on uh, step 13, now we're on step 14. I take these out and I'm going to take them off the liquid, put them in the heat block. Again, this is a scary step where it's like, oh, my DNA is still there. It is. And the reason I've got these different little, like this is for my liquid trash, and this is for my solid waste, the standard lab safety measures. We have to keep these separated because we have to handle them differently when we throw them away. So, all right, let that evaporate. And this is then when the when I am certain that there's no ethanol left in those tubes and it's completely dry. Going to add this uh, resuspension buffer liquid. That's the it. Fish one. Fish two. Oh, I don't have a vortex. Okay, I'm just gonna flick it with my finger. That'll be good. 